Привет, друзья! Welcome back to the Gurkyur build. Okay, so we're going to move on from fuselage to wings. My plan here is to build up as much as possible. So I'm just going to fly into construction steps now and basically build up nearly every single component and then we're going to go on to some tidy up, do these seams and bits and pieces like that. So let's fly into this. Okay, like I said, I've just been gluing as much as possible together, including the wing. This is pretty strong joint um it's all lap jointed together tidy up to, new, to do a little bit here um seems to work on do all that later on these um, external fuel tanks look together rear stabilizers been working on the engine be careful with the engine pay attention to the instructions uh, especially in the orientation of these parts here um also I'll just show you something else uh yeah i'm building up everybody knows that you can paint on sprues you can also build on sprues as well like i've been doing here some of these components are getting glued together on the sprue just so i don't lose them really in principle me and work on them those are the exhaust outlets for the allison engines want to make sure that those are nice and tight uh no seams there because that will be visible um also looking at the instructions as well uh, typical sort of you know uh, mentality is to create like uh, you know spinning props <laughs> we ain't doing that of course not right instead basically I'm looking at the instructions and I think what we'll do is we'll get the spinners assembled and the back plate of those spinners all the prop blades can be painted individually it's going to just make things so quick and easy that's my idea anyways and then we'll just glue them solidly onto the um onto the mounts so i need to work at this also of course there's lots of paint call outs here internally painting this this and this ah geez there's just um for me no point in doing that there's just too much depth in there really to see inside them so okay they've got the detail but is it visible not really so i'll work on the painting you know as best as i can later on more important to me is to get the seam on these nacelles properly cleaned up so that's probably the next thing we'll work on then we can get all that sort of assembly done in particular the joint of the nacelles onto the wing we want all that nice and clean drop tanks can stay off a few more details to add on I think, uh, yeah, I'll plow on with some more assembly. Just try and glue as much together as possible, and then we'll come back and see where we are. Okay, let's just bring you up to date on what's been going on here. As you can see, we've sort of been, uh, we're still in our dry stage fit out, basically. But uh, I just need to show you how wonderful that wing join is here. Uh, okay, we knew that the upper surface was pretty good. Check underneath as well. We're going to have no problem at all sort of joining this up on at the end of course the wings being assembled now still got a bit of tidy up to do here and there but basically the joints really good um, I haven't got any seam issues on the leading edge of the wing been working the fuselage uh, this of course is the usual sort of go-to for me is the crack cream where I can use it however I've got this portion at the front it's going to take a little bit more work I've got a bit of a step here and that is an important area probably super glue and I'm gonna try some super glue and baking soda this seam needs to be worked under but of course it's the uh, the ventral portion so not really a big deal underneath the aircraft not really too worried about also I have got some photo etch detail that will go underneath there for if we see it or not well that's a different matter okay uh engine nasals have all been constructed labeled them up but basically they're very self-explanatory where they go on to i uh, need to tidy these up the seams etc and uh, i'll just show you all the other ah right okay also yes nose weight is being added in you do need it for this model it tells you so many grams i just ignore that i basically just jam it full of lead shot and we can push that on there real soon and get that seam worked out as well also of course we need to put on our, our uh, the main glazing as well now i just want to work this seam first get all that issue sorted out before i do so let me show you some other stuff that i've been on with yeah in this little box of goodies here 
basically it's all the components that I need um, that are going to be sort of separately constructed. Well, actually I haven't worked out the landing gear yet, but as I said, the prop blades, painting those all up on the sprue makes things quick and easy. Landing gear, those are being constructed, well the nose gear, landing gear being constructed. Also, I've worked on the fit of the resin wheels, but I'll show you that a little bit later on, no big deal there. Uh, these are all just small little components, very small, very fine detail bits that need to be added on. Need to work the seams of the engine exhausts. Uh, these will get painted up separately and attached later. What else have I done? The spinners. The spinners have been constructed. These need tidy up. Need to work on that seam there. And these can be painted separately. And then all the other little components. This is something... That I'm debating now at the moment for the apparently this is the RAF um, I don't know what you call it rear of the fuselage bit and this is the other versions now apparently this is not exactly correct for an RAF version and I'm just going to check some references some of the people that know a lot more about Hercules um, offer some sort of solution there but it certainly isn't this this is a version with uh, radar warning receivers on it and this is just like a standard version it just clips on like what i meant by the back of the fuselage is this portion right here just at the back here but i'll just have a look at references on that i'm going to work on these seams now um should i show you that yeah i think i'll show you a little bit of work on there basically this one's more or less worked out just need to do a bit of test on that but this one here, that needs work on, and in particular this one here. Also, what else have I got? That step actually is alleviated. That's not too bad as I thought. Need to think about how I work the photo etch into this. Um, bearing in mind I've got the 3D uh, volumetric decals to apply, and I'm thinking 3D decals first, then photo etch. That is the thought process at the moment. Anyway, I'm going to plow on with this tidy up, and I think we're going to be very close to getting to main paint job. Or actually, no, no, we'll be getting close to applying the volumetric de de decals first. Okay, I've chucked a few more hours in here. Again, dry fit, of course, but as you can see, um, uh, most of these seams have been worked on now. Uh, the nose has been fitted on. The engines have been fitted on. A little bit of blend work to do just on the attachment points on top there, so I'll get that done. Also, I have, I've been also... Uh, I decided to rescribe most of the panel lines using this... Um, Alpha cutter just running the blade up and down the lines just to deepen them out a little bit it's just going to be for my painting style uh, it's going to work out better for what I have in mind so uh, yeah a bit more filler work to do but uh, these fit on really quite good um, these seams have been worked on on top of the nasals uh, be careful with these outboard engines they reverse them and the instructions they call out the wrong position somebody else told me about that as well but uh, yeah okay that's good this blend here this is a lot better now this blend here is a lot better that's working out the nose has been fitted on with the weight on so i've got the center of gravity's you know pushed forward quite a bit should sit on its tail on its uh sit on its tail should sit on its nose uh but we've got the cargo ramp anyway to balance stuff out this needs a little bit of blend work here just this join there to there so i'll let this glue go off you know after a couple of hours and then i'll work on that seam tidy that up around there then get the canopy glazing at last fitted on I'm happy with these seams. They seem to be okay at the moment. They basically pass my fingernail test. So that should be good enough. The uh, rear tail planes, these are dry fit. These can be fitted on later on uh, as well, if I wish. And then also I'm thinking about the, 
the gear as well. Can I put on the? I need to start thinking about blanking this off. But anyways, let's uh, let's do the final bits of tidy up, and then I want to get on these volumetric uh, decals. Okay, so if you didn't see the interior build on the intro of that, I know I uh, mentioned the use of these uh, volumetric uh, decals. They were part of the um, pre-purchase. So, uh, yeah, I've been uh, having a go with these, experimenting with them. Experiment is the right word as well. Okay, so, what are they? They're meant to represent, um, yeah, volumetric detail, yeah, three-dimensional detail via use of a decal now the thing is this is 172 scale and i've heard about these volumetric sets um, from a company called i think it's hg or hgw that does uh rivets that you apply as a decal and you remove the film these are not them these are full blown decals now they are very um the carrier film is so thin you can barely see it so i've had an experiment on applying it and i better just tell you straight away there's a few pitfalls first of all okay you have to make sure that you get the the shape the carrier film is all over the film is the carrier film is all over the entire sheet so you need to cut out the shapes uh fairly accurately and then the actual decal itself is ultra thin and it wrinkles up really quickly so application is uh, not the easiest and I've gone straight on to the plastic I, I, my theory here is go to the plastic see how that looks if it's uh, rough if it's poor we can just coat it with some primer or surfacer or whatever we need to do but I'm going to persevere with this and as a bonus I'll just show you how how we apply this and then, uh, you know, as an experiment, would I do it again? We can only tell after the painting, but I just really honestly think at this stage, this um, the surface detail effect, I just don't think it's going to be apparent after a layer of paint. It seems to be more suitable, um, probably in larger scales um, than on this. But we'll find out. Also, another downside as well is that this is like based on the American version, the US version with the slime lights. So you've got a panel there that's just not on the RAF version. Now in hindsight, really, I should have trimmed out that area, but honestly, I just don't think we're gonna see it after the, the uh, primer's laid down. Anyways, I'm gonna show you how that's done. Okay, so the first part of this is uh, the instructions. The instructions are on the uh, website uh, and it just shows you the layout basically notice that the entire fuselage isn't covered by this um, uh, volumetric detailing it just to be it seems to be in certain areas sort of the rear fuselage area so um, we follow these and then of course all the call outs here they've done them in different colors but the first thing to do is to just trim out a section of decal that you want to apply yeah okay to the, apply these decals guess what it's just like decals Except these are ultra thin, and uh, yeah, I've already had issues, okay? Might as well just be up and honest about this, right? Okay, this is uh, my own doing here. Um, I tried to sand a little bit there, caught the edge of the film, took out some of that. I had one of them fold in on me on the top surface, so I just wrote that one off. And then, of course, as usual, by the time you're getting round to sort of, you know, getting used to this stuff, you've already damaged some of the decals. Anyways... First thing to do is trim these down as close as possible, the size of the shape that they go on to. So just really trim it close. Then make it wet as usual. I'll be right back. Okay, previously I was applying the um, Mark Set or Softer before I put on the decal. Big mistake, okay? Uh, just because they're so thin. The trick here is just to use plain old water, wet down the surface. And then what you do is you get the you need to lay these down in one sort of go so the trick is to get the film uncovered in one area then line it up and then pull the decal in one go down so it's laid down in one go uh, if you fight it oh it is a real struggle man so this is pretty good you need to just move it a little bit 
Okay, and then to get these wrinkles out, just use a brush. Um, as I found out as well, trying to like pull them, squeeze them, move them. Oh, it's ended up in disaster, to be honest. Absolute disaster. So that's the thing. Now, I've got so many concerns about these decals, especially when, when that happened, when I just barely touched that and it took all of the, well, basically the decal apart. I'm thinking, like, if these things come off after I painted, oh, it's going to be hell because it's going to ruin the paint job. The other thing I'm worried about is, is the uh, the panel lines. I spent some time and effort rescribing, deepening out the panel lines, and I still want to go with that. But I think these are conforming quite well. And um, well, I suppose really the thing to do now is to taste is to take a piece. And I should have done this in the first instance and just done a test spray of primer on top to see what happened. I mean, if you can't see it, there's just no point going on. In any case, I don't mind getting this volumetric set. The main reason I got this is because, um, well, it's gonna be a, a forthcoming kit of the hind from Zvezda is gonna be lacking this volumetric detail. I know there's gonna be a sheet released, but if the stuff doesn't work, what's the point? You know, this is the only way to find out is to uh, go through these steps. So let's persevere and get this done. Okay, a quick up to date on the, uh, the volumetric decals. I'm not really too happy with them. So uh, basically to the extent of what I've done is I, uh, I tried some primer on one of the parts and um, I'm not too happy with the effect. Anywhere I've got an imperfection, it's really magnified. I've got small air bubbles underneath some of the decals because they're just so big, they're thin, they, don't, they haven't stretched out right. I can live with them underneath this aircraft. This part's just not gonna be seen. It's gonna be tucked up underneath. It's the part of the loading bay. Um, even to the extent I've stripped it off the side of the fuselage. I just, I don't wanna fight against this anymore. Uh, but I'm gonna leave it underneath there and we'll leave it on the wings where we've done all that. You can see actually just areas of silvering just where it just doesn't totally stick down. And that is the major issue with this. Um, hopefully it comes out okay i don't really want to strip this this one's okay and then the also the effect is it's minimal it's uh, barely detectable as well uh, for what it is so i'm thinking basically with more time more effort it would probably work you know with a, a gloss coat don't if i put down a primer a gloss coat then apply them i think it work out pretty well but um, I simply haven't got the time to do that. I want to get on with this build. So instead I'm going to go on with the PE parts. I'm going to get these put, put on, not everywhere. I'm not going to use every single one of them, but I'm going to use, you know, some of these doubler plates and pieces like that. Some nice, the parts where I can get these on here. And I think we can get on with this paint job at long last. Actually, just let me also, uh, yeah, let's fare in the uh, cockpit now. Let's get that done as well. Sometimes it's just a good idea just to hold back a little bit. I'm just going to give you some examples. Okay, so photo etch, uh, yeah, I've been a bit lazy. I haven't used much of it at all. Applied it in a few areas. Um, I quite like these, um, the reinforcements around the door openings. That does look good. Um, other ones are just panels. A few on that side. The glazing's on as well. The, the kind of, this really fares in very nicely really a really good fit uh very impressive actually how that looks obviously it uh, refueling probes on now okay i tried to get away with this which is just a piece of photo etch just placed on top it just looks wrong it's lazy of me as well let's correct that we need to remove that part so i'm going to show you how to do that the other thing i've been working on is some sort of depiction of the RAF tail. So this is the wrong version. This is the like US version with the radar warning receivers. I've glued on some plastic oil on there. I'm gonna blend that round and just add some, I think it's some sort of round tubes on the back. See how that works out. I'm just going off some photographs and then get that on. But let's, uh, let's correct this, uh, this foible here because this just is not good enough. Okay, just in case you didn't know, the way to remove photo etch is using acetone, and that's exactly what we're going to do. I've decanted a little bit of the acetone. This is going to weaken the uh, cyanoacrylate. 
just going to dab it on. And this is going to debond the part fairly cleanly from the plastic. Just need to let that penetrate inside there. Then we use our scalpel blade. There it goes, it starts to debond quite quickly. That's come off. Minimum distortion to the part as well. Let's clean up this area, let's sand all this down. Let's apply a little bit more of this acetone just to get rid of the larger pieces of the super glue. Clean up the remainder using a file. So now to get this part flush, we need to grind away a bit of the plastic to the right thickness. So uh, I'm going to use a little mini drill for this or a mini rotary tool. Yeah, so we're going to use this um, battery powered rotary tool fitted with this uh, diamond milling bit to sort of level out this plastic to get this down to the right level. Let's get on with that now. Okay, just constantly uh, test fit the part. I've got this edge in here pretty much so. You need to overcut this because it needs to actually drop in to a recess for this to work and then we can fill in the rest. So I need to work on that bottom edge and the side there. So I'll continue on this. Okay, I've had a go at uh, scratching out the RAF beaver tail. Not exactly the best effort, but uh, I only had like one photograph and uh, even that was stolen from somebody else's build. So that's basically that. I'm going to stick that on. Just a little bit of filler add in there and then uh, I think everything's okay in terms of construction now. Okay, finally we are ready for paint. I've got a rough paint plan laid out. I'm going to start. I'm going to start with Mr. Servicer Black, and uh, basically lay in all the areas of the photo etch, areas of the transparencies, and especially areas over the volumetric decal. And then I'll start the painting, and I'll probably explain that afterwards. But uh, I'll shop now, and let's get on with this.
Okay, just a slight pause in the painting process. Better just tell you what was going on because uh, you saw different things happening. Okay, first of all, like these are my go-to colors basically, Mr. Color. Um, I chose the dark sea gray, chose dark green as the RAF colors. When I applied that dark sea gray, and I should have just simply looked underneath, it's just way too light. It just does not look like dark sea gray. The same with the dark green. Dark green, not as bad, but still not a dark green like an RAF camo dark green. So we reverted to our Tamiya colors. Um, this dark sea gray is a dark sea gray, and we used NATO green for the green. Okay, let's just do a quick pray. See, on what you've seen, you've seen some uh, airbrushing and you've heard some music, but that sort of procedure took uh, three days. And that's why this video is quite, quite delayed. I'm out of practice on building aircraft. And yeah, so I had a bit of a battle fighting those issues, reapplying the paint. Also, my masking wasn't up to scratch. Okay, in terms of the camouflage as well, I've got a mixture of the hard edge and also some soft mottling type effects a bit of variation uh, i'm quite happy with it got the gloss coat down okay so now we need to just get on with the uh, decal applications lots of big decals i was going to sort of mask off the demarcation those like yellow walkways but i would have quite a few issues one is overspray the yellow so it takes lots of masking i'm a bit tired of masking i want to use the decals also i want to apply them got the gloss coat, coat down the gloss coat will help us slide the decal on the surface to get placement so let's get these decals on and uh round this off Okay, decals are on. I'll uh, do a wrap up in a minute. I've just applied the, another gloss coat on top of that. Uh, not too bad actually, not too many problems. I went for the entire big decals. Yeah, they're all big sheets on there. So that can create some issues, but by having a gloss coat down, alleviates a lot of them. Okay, and we've got some areas as well. We've got to deal with, deal with them in the next video. We've got some areas here, roughness, like different re reflectivity when I try to use some of the decal setting solutions but these big decals you can get them to work by applying the the gloss coat i think that's the main thing uh that came out of this really there are different ways to do it but i chose to use what i had inside the kit 
Anyways, hope you enjoyed this video. There's going to be one further one. Try and get everything finished off, including my favourite part, the weathering. So, see you in the next one, guys.